short for Eric and Parrish making dollars. EPMD exploded into hip-hop in the late 80s, with their first two albums both going number one. Eric Sermon is my friend from eighth grade, from around the way building the 68 Camaro. Our life wasn't built on EPMD, our life was built on friendship. With a new deal at Def Jam, and their own management company to handle their proteges, EPMD released their third album, Business As Usual. After our third album, it was break time, and I said, like, okay, we're already established, let's really try to put them on now. Eric and Parrish formed the Hit Squad, an all-star group designed to introduce up-and-coming artists, Redman, K-Solo, and Das FX to the world. At that moment, we control airways at that moment. You know what I'm saying? We're like, we're like, oh, the whole posse is on the countdown. One day, Eric said, yo, I don't want to mess with the business. I just want to chill, so P, you handle that. My whole thing was music. I wanted to rap, give people what they wanted, the whole nine, and just be busy and chill with my boys, ride around the cars, and just chill. EPMD began work on their fourth album, Business Never Personal. In the middle of recording that album in the house we in, four gunmen broke into my home. I was coming home from doing something and I went to the 7-Eleven to get a box of Phillies. So if I didn't stop and go get those Phillies that day, I would have walked right into an ambush. Several men entered the house and at gunpoint forced everyone inside to the ground. The gunmen began to search the house. It was asking for me, where's P? I was so close to it that when I pulled up in my driveway, my man was tied up and I couldn't hear him because we had the system loud. And when I turned it down, I was like, yo, what? Then my alarm went off upstairs. The gunman fled the scene. And then I seen all these people running up the street. So I drove around a corner and I seen a blue car pull out. I get the plate number. So by the time I got back from following the guys getting the plate number, the cops was already at my house. The first person who I'ma call when it went down, I call Eric. I said, hey, you ain't gonna believe it. Work continued on the hit squad and the business never personal LP. For months, nothing came of the break-in. August 25th, 1992, my man said, yo, we gotta go down to the precinct. This is two weeks before we about to go on the hit squad tour. So he's like, yo, you ain't gonna like what you're gonna hear. So I'm like, you know, I'm running with the energy and I'm not really conscious. You know how sometimes you think you're ready for something and whatever, whatever. So we drive down there to the precinct, Detective Flom at the third precinct in Brent Malone Island, Fifth Avenue. His first words to me was like, hey, Paris, is your group breaking up? And I was like, what do you mean? He says, because we caught the, 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 the guys who broke in your house and they signed a statement saying that your partner, Eric Sermon, paid him $5,000 to break in your house. We interviewed the witnesses, we canvassed the neighbors to see what they saw, if anything at all. And I had the plate number the parish gave me. And that came back to uh, one of the defendants who had the Jersey address at the time. So we made several trips in New Jersey. We finally, we couldn't locate him there. We finally spoke to his mother. And she supplied us with pictures of him and four of his friends. Uh, those pictures were shown to the two victims. And they subsequently ID'd two of the individuals that were involved. I didn't believe it. Because at that time, with all this stuff going on, with EPMD, anybody in their right mind know they couldn't come and tell me anything foul about Eric. Three albums, number ones, in a row. I had everything sold up. Our own producers, no money goes to nowhere. The fame was just high. Eric said, I mean, he gotta have about $2 million at home. Yeah, a lot of people thought that I ripped Eric off and EPMD broke up because of money. My whole vision was blind. Got frightened by the numbers. It was a lot of money, you know, being made, you know. And no ends wasn't being cut the right ways. Got frightened by contrast. You know, I'd be looking at niggas on the TV running off with the mouth and all this other bullshit about P jerking niggas or, you know, P did this or P took that, fuck that. Got frightened by words, different phrases. You ever see a contract? P would've said fuck all these niggas, P had his loot. Niggas wouldn't have gold downs. There wouldn't be no platinum albums. There wouldn't have been no war tour. There wouldn't have been no hit squad mark. When he was controlling things, he wasn't teaching none of us what's going on. Market savings, CDs, tax brackets, tax accounts, accounted, contracts. What do you own? Just breaking stuff down. 
Then answer one question. There's not too much to argue about when it's a 50-50 split music wise. The 50-50 split publisher marks. It's a 50-50 split show wise. But there's so much stuff in the back of that. Man got you messed While up. While Parrish Smith maintained that the EPMD business was a 50-50 split, Eric Sermon was concerned about the revenue from the group's proteges, where the split wasn't even. Now what I chose to do with Kay Solo, who I knew since 13, and through my relationship through Sylvia Rome, that's a whole different ballgame. Now what I chose to do with Schumann Management, which was active since 1990 when Solo first came out, that's on me. Parrish Smith also took a larger share of the Das FX monies, on the grounds that he was handling the business. Niggas was young. The pressure on them niggas was crazy. You heard? Leo and them niggas calling niggas every day, yo, this, this, and that. His squad was moving. Pressure was on. And what makes that even more iller, in the middle of the hit squad blowing up, when Dots FX sat on top of the charts for six weeks straight at number one with Dead Serious, RCA Records called me with a multi-million dollar deal. My biggest concern in life was making sure wherever I went, Eric came. You have partnerships that bust up all the time. Usually it's over money. But they usually don't send people to their partner's house with guns and duct tape and do business that way. <laughs> Parrish Smith decided not to press charges. Well, yo, if y'all start questioning this now while we sell all these records when we got all this light, there's no way we're going to be on the tour and then the rest of these guys who have nothing to do with it is going to get screwed. Then you would have never seen the Hit Squad, you wouldn't have seen Das FX, and you wouldn't have seen Red Man. So I was like, let us take care of the tour, and I'm convinced when we get home, we'll be able to settle it. Parrish Smith proceeded to go on tour with a business and creative partner who had put him in a potentially life-threatening situation. I'm not saying that was a hit. But if something went wrong and these guys were armed, Eric Parrish could have wound up being dead, you know, being killed. Want me to tell you how more wild was? The guy who was responsible, who was actually in my house with the hoodie on, was on the same tour bus with us. Eric must have gotten a window of what was happening, got an attorney, and he left New York State and went to Georgia. And if he had not fled New York and did not retain an attorney, he probably would have been arrested. And he was never charged. And that in itself is kind of disappointing because I wanted to get Eric. The conflict also split up the hit squad. Whoever ran with Paris ran with Paris. Whoever ran with E ran with E. Red Man is down. Mm -hmm. We finished up Red Man's album right now. I came in with E, so that's who I'm going now with, you know what I mean? Paris Smith kept the name The Hit Squad, while Eric Sermon created The Death Squad. Just remember the Death Squad force. Red Man, Eric Sermon, and Keith Murray. Word up. While Eric and Parrish embarked on solo careers, neither was as successful on his own as he had been in EPMD. The business of hip-hop had come between two childhood friends and had nearly taken lives. For him and I have to conversate with that in the same tongue as music. It's like, you know what I mean? This problem didn't happen in the vocal booth. This problem didn't happen when we was producing and writing rhymes. This is something that didn't had nothing to do with EPMD. That was something from the outside. Amazingly, as a testament to the friendship they'd had and the music they'd created, Eric and Parrish got back together in 1996 for the aptly titled Back in Business. He's my man. To the world, my relationship with Eric is Eric and Parrish making dollars and the rap and the microphone and the fishing hat. And that's what life is about, you know, living, learning, and moving on not carrying luggage or keeping dark stuff on your heart. 